Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Network Collective's latest webinar on the topic of Is Now the Time to Ditch Your Landlines? My name is John Waterhouse. I'm CEO of the Network Collective and I'll be your host for the next 20 minutes. Uh, as I'm sure everyone joining knows, uh, TNC is the UK's largest independent network and telecom strategy and sourcing consultancy supporting over 250 major UK multinational companies to get the best commercial, technical, operational and contractual results from their network and telecom services. So joining me today is our CTO, Craig Northfest. Craig, would you like to say hello to our listeners? Yeah, sure. Hello, John. Hello to the listeners of the webinar. Um, I think as per John's introduction there, my name is Craig Northfest, CTO at Network Collective. Um, a, a quick kind of overview of what I do there. So. Primarily, I'm responsible for developing TNC's subject matter expertise and market intelligence, um, specifically around market products and technical solutions our clients may be interested or could potentially benefit from. Um, so I spend a lot of time with the market, I spend a lot of time with our customers, both in pre-sales and as a lead consultant developing and delivering network and telecom strategies. Fantastic. So I know you'll have lots to bring to us today on this uh, this very interesting topic, Craig. But just before we get stuck into the the meat of, of the webinar, just a couple, a couple of quick housekeeping points. Uh, so we are going to be very strict on sticking to the 20 minute timetable, uh, and uh, everyone joining will have access to a recording of the webinar, and we will try to respond to any questions uh, at the end. But if we don't have time to answer all the questions, we will respond on email afterwards. So Craig, if you can flick us on to our first business slide. Yeah. So the, the purpose of today's webinar is, is to evaluate the question of why an organization might want to go landline free, how that could be achieved, and the benefits that strategy uh, could deliver. Now, as always with our webinar, we're looking to tackle you know, a very hot topic in the industry. Uh, so we're going to you know, really try to put a serious focus on the realism, the viability, the actual benefits an organization uh, could really achieve out of uh, this activity. So, four key questions we're going to tackle. Why might I want to go landline free? What does it mean to go landline free? Would this save me money? And what are the wider costs and benefits uh, of this? Uh, of this approach. Now, as I think everyone knows, TNC leads more telephony procurement processes for more organizations than any other consultancy. So we have more insight into what's really going on in the market than anyone else. And crucially, we're totally vendor independent. So uh, we aren't trying to persuade anyone to, to, to back any particular vendor, to back any particular technology. All we're trying to do is reflect what's really happy in the market and stripping out those sales and marketing messages to get to the, uh, let's say, get to the unvarnished truth. So that's all the background done. So let's go on with the analysis. Craig, so look at this first slide. Can you talk us through why an organisation might want to go landline free? Yeah, absolutely, John. So I think I think I think kind of if we if we start from um, you know kind of a data centric approach on this and what we're seeing from terms of trend analysis, you know, the first point that we're talking about there is around the usage on traditional landlines declining. Um, so you know we 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 can evidence that through the billing analysis that we do for customers, and we can see that there is a very clear trend, um, which is pointing to less usage of the traditional model of landlines. So. You know, there's a key thing there, there's a key driver, a key indicator to say that you know the, the costs associated with them with, with, with the with the fixed line infrastructure, if it's not being used, it doesn't make sense to keep and retain that infrastructure. So that's one reason why you know we, we we foresee that people will start considering to remove that over time. I think the other really important thing is the the culture many organizations are adopting now. Um, so, you know, as we look at um, the, the, the kind of new working millennials that are coming into the businesses, um, they are certainly not familiar with working from fixed desks, fixed locations. They are far more agile and they want more access to information quicker and be able to communicate different methods. Um, traditional fixed voice telephony is not that type of medium for them. They really want to move more into kind of unified communications environment. Um, and I think kind of supporting that that approach as well. Um, another point we touch upon there, and again, trend analysis that we see from the data that we've got, um, the pricing associated with things like mobile phones uh, has clearly reduced in pre over the last couple of years and is now actually becoming a potential um, replacement opportunity for landlines. 
So these are kind of key reasons why we think um, you know people, are going to, uh, customers, and organisations might want to go along that route. <clears throat> so there's some really interesting points there. So it, it, what you're saying is this isn't a technology-driven conversation. This is a business-driven conversation. It's changing working practices, changing uh, culture. Uh, and, and therefore, organizations needing to deliver different media to their people to enable them to be productive, to, to work in those new cultures. Absolutely that, and, and, and continue to try to reduce cost. Um, you know, if, if, if this is a piece of technology that's sat there um, dormant for a high percentage of time, and it's there just in case, um, you know, the, the occasional time you might use it, um, it makes a lot of sense to remove it and look to replace it with some alternative technology which can deliver additional value and benefit. Okay, so that's, that's a perfect segue, I think, to, to move on to the next slide. So you talked about uh, going line life free isn't just about exiting, uh, retiring an old technology, but it's about replacing it with, with new technology. So, so what, what does it mean for an organization to go land line free? Yeah, so I think the reality of this is that you, you, most organizations are not going to cease their contracts for fixed line telephony um, and remove all the lines from their business. There's still a requirement um, maybe in the building management systems, um, lift lines, emergency lines, these kind of things. There's potentially still a requirement for some level of one line um, environment. However, we do see that being vastly reduced and a kind of move to more of a unified commons based type solution um, where you move beyond just telephony into an environment where you focus more on collaboration, instant messaging, um, video, um, more conferencing type based solutions that really kind of deliver that um, new approach to, to working. I think that enables lots of things around um, potentially real estate rationalization, mobile working, working from home, agile workforce. There's lots of drivers that moving away from the traditional model will actually um, deliver into the business. Um, so yeah, I think technology technology is a, a big part of this. Um, replacing replacing traditional telephony with say IPTs is is something that we're not seeing being um, massively adopted now. Most organisations are jumping or, or leaping over that approach, that traditional approach, and moving more to a UC based solution, um, typically hosted in the cloud as well. So I, I know we, we wrote a, a follow up blog on a couple of these these uh, points recently, and we talked there about organisations moving to, to what we call a, a fragmented telephony environment, where what you know different you know, personas, different user types, end up with different solutions. So uh, yeah. some some may retain a desk phone but fewer, some some will end up with a soft phone, some will end up with, with UCAS, some will have just a mobile, some will go to BYOD. So is, is, is it fair to say organizations, it's not a wholesale replacement of one technology with another, it's replacement of one technology with a whole range of other technologies based on requirements, eligibility, uh, role, etc. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, and that's a, that's a really good point. Um, and it, it differs between organisations. Um, so for some organisations, being able to completely replace as much as possible with a single UC solution will will will, will fit the bill. Um, but for other organisations, and you know, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, we work quite a lot in retail. Some of the retailers that we work with, um, particularly in their store environments. So if we say um, you know a supermarket, which might have a a butcher counter within the store, for instance, for example, and that, that butcher doesn't necessarily need um, a whole plethora of UC communication capabilities. They need landlines for, you know, potential emergencies if they've chopped up a finger or something like that. So you, you do need to kind of really understand the personas across the business um, and, and right size and, and, and deliver the correct technical specification, which may be from one or more solutions. I think the key thing is obviously where possible um, integration is is fundamental, um, particularly when we're looking back into telephony, trying to um, unify a dial plan again is, is quite fundamental. Um, but these things um, are, are certainly developing from a technical perspective and 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 are now available now and 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 quite a few credible solutions out there delivering that type of capability. So what one of the questions we've had in on this is around that uh, sort of end user adoption. Yeah, how do you get that uh, that buy-in, that end user adoption, 
of these new systems? Because I guess for a lot of people, you know, they're used to the old ways of work. You mentioned the millennials who are coming in have never worked at a desk phone and fixed desk environment. But there's a lot of people who have. How, what, what steps can organizations take to, to, to improve that? Yeah, again, that's a really good point. I think one of the biggest challenges that we've seen over the last few years is adoption of, of, of new type of technologies. Um, so um, participation is key. Um, so very early in the stage, um, ensuring that the, 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 the key departments of an organization or, or representatives from the departments are, are represented in terms of what their requirements are for, for telephony and UC going forward. Um, I think education is really key as well. Um, and you know supportive adoption so not necessarily a big bang and not necessarily every everywhere um, but a more kind of slow steady well-planned adoption which is um, it, it, there's, there's some educational plan around it and some training to support it um, we typically see that organizations that take that route plan properly prepare it test it proof of concept ensure that people are bought in um, deliver better outcomes than, than organisations that just force it on their employees because that doesn't necessarily work very well. So the top-down kind of mandated approach is perhaps not the uh, not not the way to get end users on board with this because presumably there are a lot of end benefits to the end users, right? You know that if it facilitates them having a more flexible working environment or or um, you know being more productive or whatever it is, presumably. Yeah, you know, getting those benefits articulated and and people understanding how they can access them is, is key. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so moving on to 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 our next slide. Hey, and this is this is a key point, right? A, a lot of people uh, are looking at cost savings in this area, as you said. Um, you know, they they've potentially got a. A, a, a system deployed which is getting low levels of utilization therefore it's perhaps not a very uh, uh, smart use of, of budget but is, is this a cost saving measure is this a, is this a cost neutral measure what, what, what what's the commercial aspect of this it's, it's a really interesting discussion um, and it, it changes from organization to organization so you know the, the summary answer on it I think you could talk about this for a long time the summary answer on it is Potentially, you can save money. Um, you can definitely avoid spending money on new infrastructure. Um, what we've seen, particularly in the last year, is um, organizations that are running what we probably class as you know, legacy Cisco and Avaya environments, they've hit a life cycle issue that have become unsupportable. Um, so, you know, they, they're having to either shell out lots of money to ensure that that platform stays supportable or consider something different. Um, obviously, the, the, the commercial model that you choose for that something different um, could be a replacement CapEx type solution, or you could move to more of a subscription based OpEx type solution. I think, again, depending on, depending on the scope and specification um, and, and the term that you look at the ROI, um, sometimes the OpEx solution will come in more expensive than what it would do to replace like for like what you've currently got today for a supportable solution. Therefore, you've got to look at you know wider benefits around potential um, real estate rationalization, potential benefits from enabling people to work from home or be more mobile and the kind of you know productivity benefits you get out of the back of that. So it's not it's not a, a simple answer, will this save money? Um, it can drive new initiatives that will definitely save money. Um, but if you look at it as a direct cost savings comparison, um, it's probably fair to say that the business case doesn't always stack up. Is there no, I know one of the things we talk about very often in this space is, is this term right sizing. Um, mm. I'm, I'm slightly concerned we've managed to get 15 minutes into this uh, into this webinar without using that word, so let's get it out of there right now. But yeah, the the, 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 the point of you know, if for the sake of argument, you've got 3,000 connections on a on a legacy desk phone system now, and you look to replace that low functionality set of connections with a high functionality, you know, UCAS type solution for the same 3,000 users, yeah, that business case is going to be difficult. But of course, in reality, you probably, you may have 3,000 connections on your PBX today, but only 500 of those are in active use. And if you, you know, it, it, by the time you right size to your state and work out, you actually need 500 UCAS connections, it starts to become cost effective. So that, that there must be an element of that right sizing in it. 
absolutely and this, this is a key part of the the kind of requirements definition um around what, what you actually need um going forward because you know i think just to add to that you might find out your, your three thousand extensions that you've got subscribed to or via or a cisco or my tell box that yeah only 500 are actively used at any t any given time what you probably also find then is that of them 500 people that 50 percent have also got mobile phones um and you know there's, there's a, pot a potential opportunity to look at um either kind of ott type applications or, or natively built-in applications to deliver similar functionality as what you would get to the desk now obviously there are some challenges um there are emotional challenges there are simple challenges like you need to keep your mobile phone charged you know if, if you're on call or something like that um so there are there are some challenges but yeah i think that that kind of approach to really understanding um, what the what the needs um, are, um, and then and then sizing that accordingly, to ensure it's not a direct like for like, because you, you'd be wasting quite a lot of money to be to be frank. So okay, that, 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 that's a really interesting point because one more, more of the questions we have been asked is what do most companies miss when they're looking at this type of initiative? From my experience, it is that real deep dive requirement definition persona definition and that right sizing that flows from it so they, they make the mistake of trying to say well, i have this today and the direct replacement for that is that that doesn't work right yeah it, it absolutely absolutely doesn't work um i think organizations that effectively attempt to do this on a like for like basis will will always struggle to one deliver any cost savings and two probably get a solution that's right for the business um, I think you, you need to you need to take it back a level and, and actually ask some questions around well how do we want to communicate in the future um, how can we how can we enable um, new channels of communication through things like collaboration um, video more conferencing type capabilities I am rather than using um, picking up the phone and, and, and communicating all the time obviously some businesses still need that requirement um, but you, there's, there's alternative methods of doing that now. You don't always necessarily need to do it the traditional way. Um, so, you know, the strategies that we work with customers in this space, certainly we take it right back to, right, let's 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 kind of reevaluate rather than doing a light for light replacement. Let's reevaluate where the opportunities are to not only kind of save some money if, if, if possible, but drive some additional business benefit that you can go back and, and, and kind of demonstrate over the longer term. Okay, that's okay, really, really useful. So, so if you can flick onto the, the final slide, the uh, uh, well, penultimate slide uh, about the wider cost of the print, I feel we probably organically picked up a lot of these in, in the discussion so far, but just perhaps summarize for us, if you could, what, what, what are the non, uh, you know, the non-commercial uh, uh, cost benefits of, of this sort of change? Yeah, so I think I think in terms of you know what the, the wider considerations potentially if we start there, um, obviously moving from a traditional um, legacy landline environment um, where you're on a you know fixed network uncontended, there's no kind of challenges around quality service or anything like that. Um, moving that into something that effectively becomes an application um, as opposed to a, a traditional capability, um, you've obviously got considerations of the the network impact. Um, that's right across the network, not just the kind of wide area network, but into the LAN and potentially into Wi-Fi, particularly if you're deploying services on on wireless or mobile type devices. Um, obviously, if you then decide, well, we want to um, we want to go down the route of mo mobilising our workforce, so we're going to draw we're going to drive some of this um, new capability out onto mobile devices. Obviously, then there's cost considerations around. Um, usage consumption, data consumption, um, and, and kind of deals that you get within the mobile environment as well. Uh, uh, just back to that question about what most companies miss, are, are, are those points that companies forget to think about as well? Will my network support this? What will happen to my other costs if I do this? Are, 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 are those things that organisations kind of forget to think about up front and, and, and repent at leisure? Yeah, I, th I think I think from both a cost and a benefit perspective, so it's the indirect things. Um, so yeah, it changes to the network, um, it changes potentially to the, the the usage profiles of of things like mobile. 
um, but but also the benefit aspect of it. Well, if we do this, can can we drive out some um, some cost in terms of travel? Can we drive out cost in terms of real estate? Can we can we improve productivity? So you know, if you got down to a level of how much how much is, is a person's time worth? Um, the reality is, if that was factored in, you'd probably be able to build a, a very easy business case. But again, the reality of doing that is is very very difficult, and many organisations won't even take that into consideration. But there are some key kind of indirect things that have got to be taken into account when really understanding, you know, that transition from from point A landlines to to, to point B, um, which is you know something far more collaborative. So that and and, 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 and in your experience, I think I'm right in saying the, the, where these business cases fail is where organisations don't think about it in those terms. You know, if you think about it in two straightforward away. I spend a million pounds on fixed light telephony today. I'm going to spend a million pounds on on unified comms as a service tomorrow. That business case will fail because you know you, you, they're just not comparable services. You, you've got to have the, the need and the requirement to drive uh, uh, you know, to make the make use out of that more functional solution. Yeah, and, and a lot of this comes down. A lot of this does actually boil down to well, where does the budget sit within the organisation? Um, so you know, b building a business case is typically on on um, a single budget line rather than reflecting maybe something in HR or something in the states because because it, it just most organisations just don't work that way at, at a certain level. Um, but you know, being able to call it out in a business case, I think, is a real key thing. And and having a more collaborative approach again to the requirements definition piece involving HR, involving the states, looking at how things can be done differently, um, will will ultimately deliver a better better outcome. Craig, it's very, very interesting. I'm conscious of our time, so we probably should yeah. should jump to our conclusion slide. So uh, I, I think if I, if I sort of try and sum up what, what, what we've discussed today, the, 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 you know, we certainly see that uh, organizations are looking to do different things in terms of connectivity and voice and, and uh, collaboration, interactivity of their staff and, and try and drive productivity and support uh, these different areas. Um, I, I, I guess really what we're saying is, you know, this isn't a time for a sort of ideological approach that says everyone must go UT or everyone must do this or do that. It's got to be requirements driven. It's got to be driven by uh, the relevant personas for your organisation. It's got to be driven by right sizing and so on. But done right, there are some great opportunities for enablement of you know, more productive, more functional, uh, more flexible working environments leveraging these technologies is that a fair summary yeah absolutely i think you know the key the key, the key, key takeaway is really a wider stakeholder engagement um, um education programs to ensure that adoption is is, is done correctly and, and absolutely you know the specification right from day one needs to be right for the business rather than you know defining a set of requirements around a product i mean that that back to the kind of mistakes people are making um, sometimes they're developing a set of requirements around the product that's out there on the market because that's the product that they think they want to deliver. Um, that doesn't necessarily necessarily always align to what the business needs. Um, so you take it a step back, forget about the products that are on the market, really understand what opportunities and benefits there are out there um, for your business, um, and then then go to the market with that proposition. Very interesting. Stuff, Craig. Right, we, we better leave it there and draw it to a, to a close. Uh, we have had a few questions, which I, I apologise we haven't had time to uh, to respond on, but we will respond to those on email after the session. So thank you very much, Craig, for providing with your insight. Always very, very interesting. And uh, finally, as hopefully people can see on their screen, I can't see on my screen, but hopefully everyone else can. Uh, if anyone would like to discuss uh, the potential impact of these developments to their organisation, please do get in touch with us via our website. We'd be delighted to arrange one-on-one -on -one sessions to thought this through. And on that note, thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you, John. Bye. Bye.